get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of RxBars, which told their story. They sold to Kellogg for $600 million. Check out the interview of how they built that up. P90X founder Tony Horton talks about how he made money as a street mime before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars. And Baby Einstein founder talked about she's a two-time cancer. She isn't like survivor. Mark, she likes assassin because Survivor is more like a victim. And the founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell, talked about how when Steve Jobs, uh, Steve Jobs um, was his mentee, he offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000. And he talked about why he turned that down. Wow. And yeah, it's crazy. Um, and, and so many more amazing entrepreneurs like we have today. But uh, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And Our mission is to connect you with your best referral partners and customers, and we do that through three ways. We have a done-for-you event solution for large conferences or software companies, a done-for-you podcast solution, which in my opinion is, I believe is the best thing I've done for my business, and I say my life, but then my wife disagrees with that, Mark, so I'll say business and life. I've made amazing best friends through this, this process and a lead generation solution. Um, but we do have a greater purpose behind it, which is um, driven by uh, my business partner and I realized our grandfathers were a huge inspiration for us. Um, my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor. His was a B-17 captain pilot. And there's a whole long story behind that. But to honor their legacy, we have a veteran entrepreneur scholarship. So uh, rise25.com slash mission. If you are a veteran, veteran entrepreneur or you know of one, send them vet, you know, rise25.com slash mission. And it basically gets you a scholarship. We did 14 events last year. Um, It gives you a scholarship to a ticket to the conference we're doing a VIP event at, the VIP event itself, or all of the above. So check that out. Um, I am excited today. Uh, We have Mark Aramley, the inventor and founder of BedJet. Um, I think, you know, your tagline, Mark, should be, we save marriages, possibly. Um, (laughs) But uh, BedJet is the world's first rapid cooling and heating system just for your bed and mark started his career working on the spacesuit for nasa and he was responsible responsible for helping engineer elements related to heating and cooling for the interior of the spacesuit so i guess if you could do that you can engineer (laughs) uh you know the heating clean for a bed believe it or not staying cool is the number one challenge it is okay it's so well insulated you got to get rid of the heat i'm sure um his career also included collaboration (laughs) with bmw um, on their first zero emissions hydrogen powered seven series sedan, working with Capstone Turbine Corporation, and even portable power systems for the US Army and Marines. Mark, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me on the show. Mark, when you shifted to direct to consumer, what were some of the things that did work? What mm-hmm. channels did you then explore or, or go on? So, I mean, the obvious places, Amazon, um, you know, and, and Amazon is kind of a necessary evil mm-hmm. in the world of direct-to-consumer e-commerce. Yeah. I mean, if you ask me as a consumer, where do I buy all my stuff? Amazon, right? If you ask me as a vendor and a merchant, what do I think about Amazon? I think they're a terrible company to work with. They're <laughs> they're, they're terrible to their merchants. Do you do FBA or? We do FBA. You do FBA. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a necessary evil. You have to be there. The company Amazon is so pro-consumer that what they lay down on the merchants is so... Um, uh, heavy-handed is, is the best word I would use. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but you have to be there, right? So, you know, that was a logical place. And, and in fact, one thing I would caution invest, uh, entrepreneurs about, when you're first starting, you know, our first year we probably did 50% of our sales on Amazon. We didn't know what the heck we were doing with e-commerce, right? We just put up a cheap $2,000 website, put it on Amazon, crossed our fingers, and boom, people were, were buying. Um, we're much more sophisticated now. And uh, we understand the landscape and, and how to get to consumers now. That first year, Amazon was 50% of our sales. Uh, it's a very easy place to get started. But I caution every entrepreneur out there, use it as a first place to get to the market really cheap and really easy. 
But if your business is 50% dependent on Amazon, your business is in danger because you don't own the customer, you don't own the brand. Amazon can wave their hand and in a blink, your sales are down by 90% because of a change in an algorithm or they decided to have their own branded Amazon product that competes with yours. They don't care about you, the small business person. They care about their customers. And that's just, it's such a divided opinion I have of Amazon because if you ask me as a consumer, I tell you, I love buying my stuff there. Yeah. I think I have a dual personality here on this topic. But uh, as a merchant, a uh, very dangerous place to let um, really more than 20, 25% of your revenue depend on because things can change there like that. Yeah. I mean, Mark, as a engineer and product inventor, when I hear Kickstarter <clears throat> or Amazon, one thing that, that comes to my mind is knockoffs. Right. So how do you fend off knockoffs and right. talk about that landscape a little bit? I remember one lady who was on Shark Tank who had, she said she got knocked off like crazy. Um, right. After Shark Tank, Kickstarter, all those. Right. I mean, you hear stories of people on Kickstarter who have this great Kickstarter, and before they even delivered their own backers, some factory in China is already exactly. shipping the same thing. Yours right. is a little more complicated. Than, so than we, we have a complicated yeah. product. I mean, our product is electromechanical. It's got controllers and a, a lot of software in our product. So while physically, you know, if you were to send this off to some factory to, to retro – engineer they could create the hardware the software is probably and and how we forced sort of low low cost electronics to perform like very high-end electronics with the controls on the heaters and such um i mean this thing has more features and more capable same and more capability as an 1800 dollars medical device right hmm. that you find in hospitals they right. have so similar technologies and we pulled it off for a couple hundred bucks same level of thermal accuracy all this stuff so so a lot of it's in the software um we did invest money in patents early on so even when the money was thin we found a, a, a reasonably priced patent attorney from the start we were filing those we've got a patent portfolio of like seven patents now um but the knockoffs are arriving this year so are they really you know oh yeah yeah um you know and 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 it's interesting. When you demonstrate success, universally, people are going to see it and want to take a piece away from you. That's just the world of business. You can't feel bad about it. it it's just part of the, the product life cycle chain. So we, I thought it was going to be about two years before the knockoffs showed up, and now it's, it's closer to three or four. Um, and they're showing up this year. You know, there's some Canadian company that has, uh, you know, tried to duplicate a lot of what we've done. They're not yet shipping. They had a Kickstarter and you go, go. Um, there's a few other smaller companies, you know, entering the field. Um, but, you know, we compete against Sleep Number who has their version of a bed jet, right? So um, how do we really fend that off? Um, it's not in patent court. You know, you got to spend half a million dollars to enforce a patent. We do it by innovating and just keeping ahead of the knockoffs. So, you know, we're releasing the next generation bed jet in literally weeks. And the remote control is the most advanced remote control in the sleep industry. It's got a color screen. Um, the electronics, it's got smart home and, and Wi-Fi and Alexa. It's 30% smaller. So rather than try to fight these guys in patent court, which, which we may if they ever yeah. take a big bite, we stay ahead by just releasing newer and better product and just staying a generation ahead of the knockoffs. That's really the right. only thing you can do. Mark, I have uh, two last questions, Mark, and I just want to say thank you. This is, I, I love hearing these stories, and everyone should check out bedjet.com. Uh, where else should we point people towards? It's a great domain, by the way. I'm surprised it was available. <laughs> it wasn't. Our oh. first domain was bedjets.com. And I wound up buying it a, a year or two in from a guy in Australia who, whose business model was good hotel rooms at airports. Okay. <laughs> Bedjet. <laughs> good domain. Yeah. Bedjet.com. Anywhere else we should point people towards to check out the products? Uh, that's it. You okay. know, you want to Google Bedjet. We've got uh, literally hundreds of product reviews, video reviews. Um, you go take a look at Amazon and, and this is my 
favorite claim right now, and it's going to sound like a big, broad marketing hyperbole. Bedjet is the number one customer-rated product in the entire mattress category on all of Amazon. Hmm. Sounds boastful, but if you go and look for any product with over 500 reviews, a volume product, in the mattress category, we have the highest percentage of five-star reviews of any product that's the versus like 2,000 other companies in the category. So we're very, very proud hmm. of that. That's right. Love it. Um, so, Mark, two things. One, I always like to hear a uh, low moment, a challenge <clears throat> in, in the life cycle of the business. And then two, on the flip side, what's been a proud moment? So what's been a low moment, big challenge for you? Um, in our first year, there was a lot of financial uncertainty, a lot. Uh, and I actually had to delay my wedding mm. for this business. And so when you talk about um, how entrepreneurs can pay a personal price, uh, you know, I, I met this amazing woman. We got engaged um, literally – uh, three or four weeks, she's uh, away from mailing out the invitations, and Bedjet is launching that month. And we have a, a wedding scheduled for later that year. And I'm just thinking, what if this thing doesn't go right? What if it? What if? What if we have wind up with some horrible warranty recall issue? Like all these risks, right? The worst pot case scenarios are. You're just thinking of right. everything that can go wrong, and you constantly have to be thinking of everything that can go wrong, right? In a in a hardware business like this, whether it's QC warranty issues, all that. And I go to her, I'm like, uh, babe, babe, babe. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to write the checks in October. I'm really worried about it. And if you can imagine. Um, going to a woman who just got a ring on her finger and she's shopping for wedding dresses and she's putting the invitations together and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was tough, right? And I'm very lucky that I had a, a supportive fiance. It took her a few days. What to did get she say? Around. I didn't sign up days. for this, Mark. No. Uh, it, it took her a few days, uh, you know, to because it's a, that's a big surprise. Uh, and after that, entirely supportive behind me all the way you know do what you need to do and we, we can put this off and i put it off um till the next year now the moral of that story how did it turn out it turned out i could have written the checks okay the business took off right away and when that wedding date came around i would have been we would have been just fine um but what i did for her the next year was give her a much uh a much nicer wedding than we would have had hmm. uh, out of out of thankfulness you know that she was patient and um and waited, yeah. you know, and supported me on it. So on the flip side, proud moments. What's been a really proud moment for you? Uh, when we got written up by CNBC and Kiplingers as one of the top five or top ten most successful fails in the history of Shark Tank. <laughs> so that definitely made me feel really, really good. Yeah. Love it. Everyone should check it out. Bedjet.com. Um, thank you, Mark. And they're saving marriages one marriage at a time. And, uh, you know, more importantly, menopause, chemotherapy, and all the conditions that really have issues with, you know, the uh, body sleep regulation. He, yeah, sleep, sleep temperature. temperature. So thank you for what you do. Really appreciate it, Mark. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me on. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.